three, two. Good morning, happy Sabbath. We're glad that you joined us on the uh, Zoom, and we hope that you will have a wonderful Sabbath together. Today, we're just going to have a couple of announcements. We uh, want to thank Jesus for all the blessings that each one of us have experienced. We're here at the Christmas season. The year is almost over. And we just need to, each one, take a few moments every day and thank God for the blessings that he's given us. Like several announcements. We uh, had the ginger red houses made, and praise the Lord, and thank him for the 200 or so. Tony said that there were approximately 200 gingerbread houses made, and I'm sure they were distributed to the families, the different children that have been involved in them over the years. Another uh, announcement is the food hampers are going to be delivered, I believe, tomorrow, and we thank God for the opportunity to give to the community in this way. Many people are hurting with the COVID and out of work, and it just is a difficult time. So we're really thankful that we have the opportunity to share some of God's love with others. Um, today, after the service, Richard Gray will be here at the church from 1 o'clock till 3 o'clock. He won't be here at 12.30, he won't be here at 3.30. He will be here between 1 and 3, and he will be giving out the uh, lesson studies for the next quarter, the quarters. So if you have one, fine. If you don't, if you would like one, please come to the church today between 1 and 3, and Richard will be happy to give you. We still have the project with the Pathfinders, the uh, hats and gloves and scarves that we'd like to collect for the young people and the people in the community as well. And we are continuing to be blessed again with the Zoom system that we are able to share with the community and people at large. Tony shared this morning that uh, there's up to 1,500 people, between 1,000 and 1,500 people every Sabbath listening to the service, which is a real blessing. So I guess as a side benefit of the COVID, we have this opportunity to share with the community as well. We just want to thank each one of you for participating and taking the time Sabbath morning to listen to the service, and we pray that you will all, we will all be blessed by the words that Tony has for us today. Thank you, Brad, for that welcoming. Welcome, church. Happy Sabbath. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for wait, for the wait and the patience that you're showing us as we get uh, every week uh, new challenges come up with technology. But thank God this is a way that we can connect and this is a way that we can come together. And this Sabbath is a very special Sabbath because we have a great celebration. There is one soul that has decided to give himself to Jesus, to recommit himself to him. And we will be experiencing a baptism this morning. So we want you to stay with us throughout the whole program, because that's going to be the main celebration of this Sabbath, to see one of our loved ones come to the waters and give himself completely to Jesus. So please bear with us this Sabbath. But I know this week has also been very challenging for many of us work and stress and knowing that the year is coming to an end and there are so many things that we still need to get ready before we can relax a couple of weeks or, or days or, or, or the time that you would like to spend with family and not being able to be with them, not being able to travel, not being able to, to see your loved ones although you've been waiting for years maybe or months. But thank God it's Sabbath and we're able to rest on His day. Thank God we have this moment where we can come and have an encounter with Jesus. Remember, this is our main priority when we come live every Sabbath, to have an experience with Jesus, to have an encounter with Him. And I know that's my necessity, and I know it's your necessity as well. So let's come together and open a word, open the Word of God, and, and allow Him to show us what He wants to, for, from us to learn. But also dedicate ourselves again to Him, and ask Him to talk to me directly. I want you to pray where you are. I want you to ask God today, 
to talk to you specifically to the need that you have. And I tell you, we all have needs. But God knows exactly the need that you need to have and cover today. He knows exactly what you need to work on today. And I want you to be honest with him. I tell him, Lord, I need to have an encounter with you. I need to see Jesus this morning. So let's pray together as we start. And let's ask him to do that exactly in our lives. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be together today. We come from different backgrounds, from different his, uh, stories, from different places. But we come today as one with one request in our hearts. And our request is to see Jesus. We want to have an encounter with him today. We want to learn from his character how to wait patiently on you. We want to understand the reality that we're living on. Not my reality, not your reality, but the reality that you want to show us. So please, once again we ask you, Lord, to come and dwell in our hearts and be part of this ceremony, this special event. We know there is a feast in heaven because there, there's one who has said, I want to give my life to Jesus. Hello? So please come and be with us as we start off with this program. We want to dedicate this special service to you. And we want to praise you for the goodness and the mercies you have shown to us through all 2020. It's been a challenging year, but it's also been a wonderful year. Because it's a year of salvation. It's a year of grace and mercy that you have shown us. So today, Lord, please help us listen to your voice again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, oh, church, I want you to come with me today to study a very brief lesson and, and, and study that we find in the Bible. But it's definitely a very important one for us to learn. We live, we, we currently we live in an era where everything seems to go fast. We want faster cars. We want faster service. We want faster internet. I tell about those who live still on a on landlines or satellite internet, wow, it's a challenge. I was talking to my students one day and I said, imagine going without a cell phone one day, what this trouble could be. Imagine not having internet, having a cell phone, but not having internet a day. Man, that, that's a real struggle for 2020, isn't it? I don't know what our parents would say, our grandparents, if they were to hear us talking like that nowadays. Because in their days, it was about water, fire, food on the table, and I know those struggles are still on today, but it seems that we just live in this fast-paced life where it's hard for us to slow down. We need everything to be in a certain way, at a certain place, with a certain amount of time. And if it doesn't happen like that, then somebody needs to pay the price for it. Because we want everything to be so quickly done that we have hardly learned to be patient. Oh, what a word, isn't it? Patient. Talk about grandma or grandpa. Talk about my aunt. Even the way she moves when she goes to the car, patiently. But us, we're not in that era anymore. We feel like everything needs to be fast. Everything needs to be at the tip of our fingers. And if it doesn't work like that, then there's nothing good on it. But there are times in life and I praise the Lord for that. Because although you might want everything to be quickly and done, God still has a way to show us that the valuable things in life take time. Things that are worth and are valuable to you will take time to develop. Talk about a character. You can't build a character from one day to another. You can't build a character from, from one morning to the night. It takes years of learning, of procedure, of pattern, of different uh, exercises for you to understand this is the way the character is to be developed. It takes time. Although we might want to live in that era and apply that to everything, when we talk about being fast and getting things done quickly, 
the Lord has a different way to show us the way he works. And I like that because God's agenda is not our agenda. The timing that God has for everything is completely different from yours and mine. It's not the same. Things don't work according to your calendar. And I go back to this every time I can because often we like to have the control in our hands. And unless it happens according to how I see it or how I call it, it seems that God is not in control. But let me tell you, who are you to say how things are to work? How about we let God be God in our lives and us just be the followers of his advice? It is like times like today that we need to learn to wait patiently on the Lord. I'm afraid there are a lot of us, and I have to include myself in that, because we're part of the society that we're living on. But we are so anxious to know that there is a vaccine already. And there's some of us thinking, when is that going to happen to me? When are they going to reach onto my name or my number? When am I going to be vaccinated so things can happen according to the way I see them? Stop waiting on the government. Stop waiting on what the world has to offer you. And learn to wait patiently on what the Lord is saying to you. Often we are putting our hopes on the plans that we have. And if they don't work according to what we believe they should, then we get discouraged and we stop. Let's go a little deeper into this. Not only that we don't learn how to wait, but often we try to help God. And we say, well, maybe the Lord doesn't know exactly how to handle my condition. Maybe he's too busy dealing with other people's stuff. Maybe you need to do something to help him. And when we read the Bible, we see a lot of cases of people trying to help the Lord. Because somehow the Lord took a little longer. Remember Abraham and Sarah? He was 80 years old when the promise came to him. But he said, Lord, I am old. How is this supposed to happen to a man at my age? But his wife, she started laughing. What are you talking about? How is this supposed to happen that something, something like this could happen to me at my age? I've been waiting for this long. And while she needed to wait another year for the promise to be fulfilled, she tried to help the Lord because the Lord was taking too much. He had promised he would give him the son of the promise. But she made a plan aside so she could help on his plans. There are many cases in the Bible where we see people trying to help because waiting patiently is not of their attributes. And it's often not yours and not mine. We were raised in a culture where if things doesn't happen according to we, the way we see them, and in the time we believe they should, then they are not working. So we are out to help God on how to handle the world. And often we believe that the church needs to rush onto things because we're not doing them the way we thought they were supposed to be done. But let me tell you, God has a plan and he has everything under control. So let's go to Psalms chapter 40 where we're going to learn a little bit of what the experience of David was learning about this process. And let me tell you, when we study David's life, wow, it, it's, it's someone that we can definitely understand. It wasn't easy for him to learn to depend on God and to learn to wait on God's timing for his own life experience. Chapter 40, verse 1, it starts by saying, I waited patiently for the Lord. The first statement he makes is I waited patiently on the Lord. You know, there is a example that we get from, from the Bible that will show us what does this mean. And the only one that can really come up with these words and shows the full meaning of waiting patiently on the Lord is Jesus Christ. We find it there in Matthew 
when we go to, to the book of Matthew, we can find how Jesus, going to the, pray, to, the, to the garden of prayer, he calls his disciples and he tells them to pray with him because what he's about to face is something that he needs help with. He needs someone to be with him in prayer and supplication. Matthew chapter 26, Jesus is about to enter one of the toughest challenges he will face on earth. Jesus knows that the day is coming to an end and the darkest hours of his tribulation are about to happen. And he brings his disciples with him and he tells them, please come with me. Let's pray together. Because what I'm, what I'm about to go through is something that I can't even handle myself. I need support on this. But I want you to understand his prayer to the Father. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, verse 41. Chapter 26, verse 41, he says, watch and pray. A little bit before that, on verse 39, he goes on to pray to the Father and he says, he went a little farther and fell on his face and praying, saying, saying, Oh, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. When David declares, I waited patiently on the Lord. He's echoing those words of Jesus, who's about to face the worst temptation anyone could bear. The separation from the Father is about to happen, and he's getting all these loads of sin from you and from me, and now he tells the Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But I'm not going to do it on my own terms. I'm going to wait on your terms. Because Jesus is the perfect example of someone who learns to wait patiently on the Lord. And this is our example today. How often do we want to pray for things to happen? But when they don't go accordingly to what we believe they should, then we try to help God and say, well, God, you're taking too much. I think you're taking too long. It's not the best idea. Let's be real. Often we need to wait, but the attitude that we have towards God is, wow, you're just taking too long. I wish you would you were to listen to me. What is happening here? It seems that you're not controlling everything that you say. Our own attitude tells us that we haven't learned to be patiently waiting on the Lord. And now, even David goes on to say, I waited patiently. Not on the outcome, not on the different sources, not on the money, not on the corporation, on the Lord. 
this shepherd kind of echoes what he said on Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When we learn to depend on him, it seems that although time takes, takes a toll in our lives, we still get to see that eventually God's will will be done. Not because of our own sake, but because of his own glory. God wants to be told and wants to be found uh, compliant with his word. He wants you to believe on his promises and he wants you to claim unto those promises because he is the one who has said them. But as we wait on those promises to happen, there is something you and me we need to learn to do and it's to stay still. And I know it's not easy. I know it's one of those things that we all struggle with. Nothing is apparently more helpless, yet really more invincible than the soul that feels its nothingness and relies wholly on God. Nothing is more helpless, yet more invincible than the soul that feels its nothingness and relies wholly on God. We are coming to an end of a year, and it's been a rough year. It's been a challenging year. Governments, companies, different factories, different uh, enterprises have gone down for the conditions that we are seeing. And we are still not seeing the full picture of what is out to come. But we need to understand today. That our salvation comes from the Lord. And that's where we need to rely wholly on Him. And we need to learn that today, not tomorrow, not when the things are happening right in front of us, not when things are coming right at our door. This is to be learned in the still process at your home. Those moments that you dedicate to pray, to study, to mingle with the Lord, to dwell at His presence. That's where you learn that the agenda of the world is not to mess with his agenda. He has a better plan than what we are out to see on, on these days. And this is something that I want you to please be reminded of. The Bible says that David waited patiently on the Lord. And he continues on to say on, on that same verse, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. God sees. God listens. And God works in your behalf. Is there something you need to learn today? Is that God is looking at you. I visit people that have told me, Pastor, I've been praying for my loved one for years. I know at least of three cases in our community where those faithful servants of God prayed while they were alive for their loved ones to come to Christ. And they went to the grave believing in His promises but not being able to see it happening. But I am a witness that now those people are coming to God. And they even mentioned to me, Pastor, my mother prayed for me for all her years that she was with us. And she died not knowing that now I am believing in the same faith she lived on. Patiently waiting on the Lord. A few years, a few, few days ago. I was with John, and we still are hurt by the loss of his life and the friendship we had. And we remember him as a man of God and someone that continually prayed for his family. And I pray that, that one morning when John wakes up, 
he is able to see there not only his wife, but all his children and his loved ones. And, and, and that promise is not vase or does not rely on, on, on John's ten t- testimony, but we, we rely on God's word and promise. Because God is the one that said, I will work for your loved ones and I will bring them to me. And this is something we're out to believe. And I know when you pray for someone, you often believe that God is not listening. But David tells us, the Lord heard my cry and he inclined himself to me. He came down and he helped me. And this is what God is doing in today's time. And although our church is closed, oh boy, God is working in every single home. And that's the beauty of having a God that is not attained by walls and by a building and by a temple, but He's freely to go anywhere. And if you admit Him in your heart today, He can do that with you. He can listen to your cry and He can come to your place and dwell with you. And listen to the story. David says that when God did that, he also brought me out of the horrible pit and out of the mere clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. It seems that those nights and days while David was fleeing from Saul, he was persecuted. Often he said that he couldn't stay more than one night in the same cave because he needed to leave. Otherwise, Saul and his army would capture him and kill him. And while he was being persecuted, he definitely encountered many challenges and trials. Some people have mentioned about quicksands. We're not completely sure what he's meaning by that. But what we do understand is that as he was fleeing, he was not only able to experience it on his own life, but also on the people that were with him. He saw him falling into different pits. And the good thing or the bad thing that happens with quicksand is the more you try to get out of them, the quicker you go in. The more you try to liberate yourself from them, the more you're sinking on them. And this is the same condition with sin. The more we try to fix it on our own, the more we mess it up. The more we try to find solutions, thinking that we're helping the Lord, the more we end up breaking things apart. And I've been in that condition. And I know you are and you have been in those places. Where the sin is getting to your neck and you feel like there is nothing else you can do. And you try to get help from here and from there and from there. And no one comes to your rescue. But cry unto the Lord and the Lord is able to get you from there and to establish your steps. What the Lord does with David, it says, the the picture that he has. Imagine a huge rock and it says, he took me out of the pit and set me on the stone. And the rock is Jesus Christ. And when our life is set upon the rock, nothing can remove you from there. No one can take you away from there. Not only he established him on the stone, but he also established his steps. It gives us the picture that he gave him a path to walk where he could be prosperous. And successful. You remember when was the last time. God called you. To a commitment with him. Do you remember when you came to Christ. The way he took you out of that life. That you were experiencing. I've been in a place. Where we are at home. But it doesn't feel like home. It feels like hell at home. Where there is shouting and screaming. And there is no respect for anyone. And there is no purpose or future. And every day you drag on to that. 
The last thing you want to do is wake up the next day to see the same reality. I experienced that with my parents. I experienced that with my siblings. I've experienced that in my own life, in my own marriage. And I've seen that happening every, every time. And there is one common denominator. There is one thing that happens every time we are in that condition. And it's because we have forgotten that the only way we can work and, li and live in this life is by God's uh, direction, by God's lead. When we put Jesus outside that picture, I tell you the next thing you're facing, it's a pit. And the more you try to get out of it, the more you're going to sink in it. And you might be sinking today. And you might be wondering, why am I in this condition? Well, let me tell you, it is time for you to start crying unto the Lord. And ask for help. Because He's willing and He's able to help you. The year is coming to an end. What are you waiting for? What needs to happen for you to understand how much he loves you and how much he cares for you? That verse, the last part of verse four, four and, and, uh, verse three, David says, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. You know, this song is describing the experience that Jesus would have when he was coming to earth. This is a messianic song. And it tells you the experience that Jesus will go through. Jesus will go into the grave to take the debt that you and me were needing to pay. And he would take our place in that, in that grave for you and me to have eternal life. But the Bible says that God took him out of there and he established him on the stone. And he put a new song. Can you picture the image of Many will see it and fear the Lord. Jesus said, but if I am erected, I will bring everyone to me. But if I am uplifted, I will bring everyone to me. And to the ones that come unto me, I do not send them out. I do not push them away. Today, is the day of salvation. Today is the day that the Lord wants to have an encounter with you. Yes, there are things happening out there. But I am tired of hearing of all the conditions that are happening out there, you know. I am exhausted. Because we get to see that on the news, on social media, everywhere. We are reminded that this world is in chaos. And that's true. It's in chaos. But your life shouldn't be in that position. If you come to Christ, you will find a place where God will establish you and put you in a path where you will be singing a new song. We're not living out of the reality that we have. We're not saying to forget the reality that is happening. But what we're saying is set your eyes a little higher. God is in control. And today, one person in our congregation has realized this. A few weeks ago, I received an email from an individual who said, Pastor, I need some help. And I said, yes, we're here to help you. Today, I am pleased and honored to announce that Kid Corbett will come to the waters and recommit himself to the Lord. Because he has understand. That the more you try to do it on your own. The less you will be able to come out of it. It is with God's help. And his mercy. That we are able to do good things in this life. But also prepare for eternity. With him. 
There is nothing in this world that you can get or being offered that will replace the glorious day that is about to happen when Jesus comes again to meet all his redeems, all his loved ones, and take him to him with he to heaven. If there are some people that know about waiting patiently, are parents. They've been praying for years. Maybe you are one of them who has been praying for years for your children. Please do not give up. Do not stop praying. God will come out at his timing and will show you his salvation. Today I want you to meet Byron Keith Corbett who's going to be presented as a publicly. And in a few minutes, we'll be able to go back there and seal his decision in the waters. For he has recognized that there is no better place to be than at the Lord's feet. And I want Keith to come up to the front and be with me. And I want him to be introduced to you as a church. Because today he is sealing this decision in the baptism, baptismal waters. Keith, you have understood that there is no better place to be than at Jesus' feet. And I am honored to present you to the church, our online church community, for them to understand also that when we pray and when we cry unto the Lord, the Lord is willing to answer prayers. And I know your parents have been praying for you for years. The church, your family, your loved ones. And I am pleased to tell you that God has heard your cry. And is inclining himself to you to help you come out of whatever condition you're on. Because today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when we see people being redeemed by the blood of Jesus. There is a big festivity in heaven today because one has said, I accept Jesus as my Savior and Christ. Keith, this is completely different from what we experience usually, but in the name and on behalf of the church, I want to welcome you to your church, to your family. Keith was baptized around 12 years old. But ever since then, it's been a long journey. And after going through some processes in his life, he has come to understand that this is home. This is the family. And I want to welcome you on behalf of our church to the Williams Lake Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church, your church, your family. And I want to tell you that God is welcoming you to heaven. Because today your name is going to be written in the book of life. And Jesus has said, the Father has given unto me those who are to be saved. And no one, no one can take him away from me. So you're about to be placed in God's hands. And no one will take you away from there. And I encourage you to continue to set your eyes on Jesus. Continue to look unto him. Because that's the only place where we are safe. And I want to welcome Keith to our church and to our community. His parents are with us today. And due to the reason and the conditions that we're living on, we're not able to bring the whole church community here. But I know you want to say some words. Write them on our page so he can read them later on. We will prepare ourselves now to go back into the waters of the baptism. And Rita will play some music as we go in the back. But if you are hearing God's word today, and if you're listening to his call, I want you to please find a way to get in touch with us. My number, our email, our page, write it there and say, I also want to be prepared to give myself to Jesus. I want to have a word of prayer with Keith today, right before we go to the waters. And I want to have a prayer for you too. 
Because I know times are not easy for you. But today is the day that God wants to save you. So let's come together. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to understand that there is a place where we can find peace and salvation. And that's at your feet. Thank you, because in the midst of that condition that we are on, and we were on, you did not look at us as unworthy, but you placed heaven and earth to come and save us. Thank you for the gift of salvation, for your sacrifice on the cross, for giving us the opportunity to now have the, the will and the ability to say, I accept that gift of salvation in my life. I pray for those who are at home, bottling with this decision, not understanding what to do. May you also lead them to you the way you have led Keith in these past months. I pray for him as he starts this new life that you may continue to bless him and establish his steps in such a way that his path is the path of the righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please do not go. We will go to the back to get ready. Meanwhile, we will be accompanied by Rita with some music. Stay with us because what is about to happen is the best miracle you're able to experience today. So come with us and stay tuned with, with our uh, live stream.
when I spoke to Keith, I knew him through an email. And now I know I have a friend. And what he shared with me was part of his past and the experience he has lived through, through the years. And he mentioned, Pastor, I've been running away for too long. To the point that I even felt sometime that I was an atheist. That God did not exist in my life. But the miracle of salvation and the work of the Holy Spirit is still true till this day. Because Keith now has come to the understanding that there is no better place to be than with Jesus. And today, Keith, for the remission of your sins, and because you have provided a profession of faith where you have said that you believe in Christ as your savior and you want to be forgiven and also you want to give a display of this public testimony that your life does not belong to you anymore but it belongs to Christ. I baptize you as a minister of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord for the miracles we're experiencing today. And I encourage you at home. If you haven't made this decision, this is the day of salvation. This is the day that the Lord has prepared for you also to be saved. We're going to end this program today with a word of prayer. And I want you to please write in the comments today your regards with Keith so he may read them later. You won't be able to welcome him in our church physically, but even online we can share the love and the excitement to see another soul being rescued for eternity into heaven. I want to pray for you as well, for your family, for your loved ones. Do not give up. Keep trusting on God. Because at the due time, he will deliver you. Would you like to share some words, Keith? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity today. To experience the miracle of salvation through the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, for our church in Williams Lake, for our community in town, for all those souls that are still needing to come to the waters. May you work with their hearts and convince them of the truth. But also, Lord, may you prepare us for your second coming. We pray for those loved ones that we have and for those that still don't know you, that you may prepare us as missionaries to them. So we, we may be witness to others of the love and mercy you have shown us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May you all have a wonderful Sabbath. May God bless you this week. May God be with you. God bless you. Happy Sabbath.